to ask you three questions. First, a year ago here in Prague, I heard you say you were writing poetry that was almost comprehensible. What do you mean by this? I feel that uh, this answer simply reflected the question I had been asked, although there was some humor, of course, in my answer. A poem is usually rather heavy going, and uh, most poems, in fact, has something inherited in it. Most of it uh, is related to the brevity. Uh, most poems are very short. For example, we could uh, look at the sonnets, uh, so brevity. And um, poignancy um, is something that is responsible for poems being rather difficult to understand. Very often we need to explain poetry, very often we need to paraphrase uh, poetry. There is hardly any narration in poetry. Uh, usually there are no um, paraphrases. Um, there is no paraphrasing of what had been said in the poem and Herder Lynn speaks of closed art and also uh, your allusion makes me say that poetry is here to be commented on, to be remembered, to be stored in our memory and to be forgotten again. We shall never understand uh, a poem in its entirety. And this um, uh, reminds me of what Paul Valéry once said in answering uh, questions of journalists. He said, my, po my poems have that importance, that significance that we assign to it. And um, that's the way I see it. In other words, a poem through its brevity is a text that should be read again and again and should be repeated and should be read again and again. Is that what you're saying? I've got another question. This question is hardly uh, original, but that is something that we have never discussed before. Which uh, modern French poets have influenced you or which of these poets? poets you would um, subscribe to. I would like to um, thank you for this question. Also, I would like to uh, uh, thank you for coming tonight. Um, again, this is a very um, important question. It would be difficult to give you just one or two names because um, when we assume responsibility, when we start writing poetry, of course, we are referring to some kind of a tradition. If we forgot um, one or two names, uh, then, of course, it would be wrong to give you a full list. I would have to start with some poems, uh, poets in the past, some from the present. I mean, perhaps I would have to go through um, the whole of the 20th century. But again, let me try to give you a brief answer to your question. For me, for me, I'm Speaking about the French uh, tradition, I should always start with Baudelaire, Mallarmé, Nerval, and some others. 
they opened the door to modernity. Then in the 20th century again, Apollinaire, of course, and um, we uh, must not forget that uh, in 1912, Um, um, he wrote poems for what Whitman, we should also mention Paul Claudel or Valerie, writing between the two wars. Um, of course, um, we must not omit the realist uh, poets, uh, those other people uh, surrounding Breton or who are in dispute with Breton. So what is the 20th century? Is it the onset of serialism? And then in the latter half of the 20th century, there is this new avant-garde. Those are my contemporaries. And here, of course, again, um, there are names that um, uh, should uh, be uh, mentioned. Jacques Roubault. Um, these people are either my friends or my enemy, Danny Roche, and some others. And then this brings us to the beginning of the 21st century with its own story. Of course, uh, we are all influenced by what we have read, what we are reading, and I would like to ask you whether uh, there has been a love at first sight for you, something you read and immediately felt that it had influenced you immensely. This would mean I would have to go back to my puberty, then Baudelaire would come up immediately. More Baudelaire than Mallarmé. Yeah, definitely Baudelaire rather than Mallarmé. That was at the time when I was a student. Uh, this was. Um, the tragic, um, I mean, these poems were very tragic, very often very romantic. Uh, this was prior to the onset of the great uh, Romanticism. And, and Bolle, Malarme, all these people are great poets. And if we were to sum it all up or or choose just one name, then it would be Bolle for me. I have written a book about uh, 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 Debile, um, a poet. And then there was um, one other question I was going to ask you because um, I would like to go slightly deeper under your skin. Are you looking for a new poetic uh, root, uh, something that you have achieved, something you have discovered perhaps, something that has really been, uh, in your opinion, a success, something that you are very proud of. I uh, do understand your question, but it is an extremely sensitive question, because if we are trying to conquer something, then it is the relationships, the very sort of subtle relations within a poem. It's a movement of some sort, a reflection. So it's not philosophy as it sense present in the poem itself, but it is rather a, an aspect of every poem referring to a certain time, to a certain experience. And if I were to answer your question, then I would perhaps say that this movement, the movement that gives a poem its own poetry, it's something that we will be discussing perhaps again tomorrow. It's something that makes poetry more autonomous. It is autonomous vis-a-vis -vis spirituality, for example. And perhaps I could use one general term, demythologizing. This is very complex. 
sometimes I do manage to come up with some very interesting formulations uh, that are worth remembering. And then I am quite happy and satisfied. So out of this connection um, and relation towards a poetry, all of a sudden we identify a kind of a loop. Poetry refers us back to the beginning of poetry, not only to Plato and Aristoteles. And this movement then makes it possible for us to create new situations present within a poem. And this, of course, also provides a context within which we can ask new questions. We can ask questions like, for example, what is the actual form of this poem? Or what is the purpose of this poem? What will be the consequence of this poem? In other words, we have new questions coming up, and these go hand in hand. And all these are present in poetry. Don't lick. And it is important to become interested in our times. And for that, poetry has got to ask uh, uh, current and relevant questions in order to be able to provide a poetic judgment of the topics of our times. One has to pose questions concerning uh, today in order to engage in communication with uh, the people of today. Um, one might ask questions concerning liberation, emancipation, self-expression. So I'm not really sure if I can refer you to a state of happiness or satisfaction. I can only offer a few words on that. Thank you very much, Michelle, for your answers. So what are we going to do now? Um, you're going to read, yes. Are you going to read yourself? Yes. And shall we read right now? We've been talking just before reading. Fine. We only had a brief conversation. I shall read in French. And let's hope that uh, um, the translation will be read out in other languages. And let me say a few words of introduction, just very simply. Um, I've been writing and publishing poems for many years. However, uh, I've written more than just poems. I have also written essays. I've uh, written um, also non-fiction. And as regards poetry reading, and we can encounter a number of different literary forms, and a poem is something brief. Anthology, a collection of poems, poses a limit to the poem because the poem first was in its own place inside a book and then it's taken out of context and brought into a new context, a different context. So an anthology naturally can um, influence uh, the message being delivered by a poem. And the fact that we are going to read only an extract of a poem can also cause damage to poetry itself. Nevertheless, I'd like to point out that for 30 years I've been publishing a journal entitled Poetry in Paris. Yes, and I've just been reminded of one thing. The aim of a journal which is devoted to poetry which features translations of poems uh, of our contemporary writers and poets of our times and one can talk about the publishing of young or less young authors and what is really needed is that, uh, that there is a reflection of poetry 
Uh, so the journal meets all those objectives. It is an integral part of uh, my work. So I've warned you. And every warning is unnecessary. I can start reading poetry. Well, I need a microphone. No, I've got it already. We can hear you fine. So uh, you can start reading right away. I'm going to read some of my verses which have been selected by my readers for this very event and most of the time these uh, poems, well there are five of those and we have uh, uh, taken them out of a big entitled um, uh, the uh, tombstone, it dates uh, back uh, to the 80s or and those refers to the recumbents where you can which you can often find uh, where you can find members of nobility uh, the first is referred to as the edge why does beloved phrase recurred at the edge of the world once again? What is this edge? What is edge? To be on the edge, the edging in Baudelaire end, the princess terrace in Rambour, with a view on the world and all of, all of it like, having passed this way, shall come back through that way. There is a misprint in, um, French, uh, it should concern everything. So now this is called the edges. What's an effort? What a secret? What hands in a flesh among shadows and the closed darkness of legs? What betrayals? What trust in the goodness of forbiddance? What a wicker work of fingers? What brashness, what acrobatic indiscretion, what despair to know, what a taste for this taste to succeed in deriving joy from pleasure, and that we may persuade it with wheedling, with bliss, to enter into comparison. Everything's dark, and yet dances, dance, dance in cadence, they cannot hide her joy. So that the share of pain incomprehensible to the living comes from this ledge of the edges of the outside, the reverse side of the slope where Bruegel's blind men drift at once here and out, side of here into the very hour of gaiety of binges of the Austral Down, outside always wind, movement that brings happiness, truths. Time is almost entirely dead, like an elm dying in Europe. I would like to substitute for this arboreal boldness some truths in rhythm of a happy conversation. Delinquency has only this aptitude anymore to recognize something in the lively thought of others. My enemies are not enemies. Dispersion of truths to infinity, like species less innumerable than taxonomies. All of a sudden, they tolerate one another from where I stand. Do not fight, nor scorn one another. There was a season for that and the spectacle of plenty. Catacrisis. I will explain what this means. Catacrisis is a rhetoric figure, um, a phrase, a forced metaphor, one can say we might might refer to a, to legs of a table as there is no single word to denote a leg of a table. So all our expression seems to be catacritic. This room resembles the start of a 100 meter dash before the signal. All the air is tense, tendons of chairs, recliner forearms, table heels, curtains of air. Everything is tense, waiting to hear the doorbell. 
your vibration. I'll jump if I hear you. I wait for you. Turning outside to inside over and over. Turning the inside out. What he's waiting for is not there. Visibly, that which is not, neither the outside nor the inside. Recumbence. I keep losing you since the time in that hotel room. And lying naked and turned aside, you shouted at me, get out. I no longer recall our quarrel, my mistake, but the paper you curved back, the still life of daylight and the wardrobe and my painless belief, a prison and I would see you again. Everything washes away, the present washes it away. With such force from hour to hour, from that hour to here, there is nothing more than the immense leafless wave unfurling. And the last poem, which is called Not on a Handkerchief, but it is uh, translated as Memorandum. For example, Berlin uh, speaks um, often of the art of poetry. Here, um, in this poem, uh, Memorandum is something reminding us that we are poets and there are certain ways of writing poetry. Memorandum, what has grounds to be, goes not without saying. And what one cannot say, writing it is necessary. The part gives on to the whole, which gives the part. Knowing what it resembles is our knowledge, non-absolute. Semblance is necessary to make contiguity. The poem is of things nearby that one must go and seek. Comparison looks after the incomparable, the distinction of things among themselves. Poetry forbids identification for the sweetness, rigorous of the like. Poetry deprives itself in order to be like a lover, a lover devouring without devouring, to signify the letter of love, ut musica, ut pictura, ut poesis. Constrained by body, thanks to the loss, to demote the senses to senses, depriving itself of what it lacks, the poem entrusts the want thereof to its language, and the blind man be named the seer. We shall never see the end. That's what I wish us but open an emergency exit to get away without seeing the end if all has always failed. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is all. Now perhaps we could address the audience. Perhaps uh, there are some people who would like to pose questions. Are there any questions? But um, in that case, we would need a microphone, of course. Um. Can you, can you all hear me? I would like to ask you, Mr. Degge, um, you mentioned Valerie. I'm afraid I cannot hear anything. I'm terribly sorry. Mr. Degge says that he can't hear. This, uh, in fact, um, uh, would uh, bring you closer to what we call the new criticism. So what is your uh, understanding of this new criticism? New criticism? I have no idea what you mean by this new criticism. Of course, new criticism, perhaps uh, dating back to the 70s. I don't know, can you tell me what actually you have in mind? Um, what I have in mind is what is uh, normally referred to as uh, the new uh, criticism, like Roland Barthes, 
stru structuralism, is that what you mean? Structuralism, that's what you mean. All right, I'm asking you about structuralism because you referred to Valeri a minute ago, uh, speaking about plurality of meanings in a text. So what do you think of uh, this interpretative um, way of um, explaining meanings? That is basically what this new criticism is all about. Uh, perhaps we should first read uh, Peribus Structural. Uh, it's a book. Unlike most of uh, what we call structures, Roland Barthes or my friend Genève um, saw this as something positive, an attainment, if you will. For example, uh, um, they praised Levi Strauss for his interpreting uh, Pessoa or some other authors. Pessoa wrote a book called Ulysses in Lisbon. And um, first we need to read this book and then perhaps we can conclude that this interpretation suffices. What I would say is that this is an attainment, a gain of some sort, gain for poetry. That's not what I would call criticism. Roland Barthes, for example, speak of the zero level of writing and he refers, for example, to metaphors. Roland Barthes says, I used to work as a literary critic I um, took together with uh, Foucault and some others. And there were times when it was uh, very modern to use metonymy, horizontal paradigms, while other things were considered uh, not suitable. Uh, some people would even speak of uh, things being ridiculous metaphor and metonymy were considered to be tools, tools, um, metonymy, uh, to use metony metonymy against metaphor did not make sense, did it? And now let's have a look at uh, what Proust does. He uses metaphors all the time, but a metaphor is not that important for him. To go back to your question, there's one thing that um, I should mention. Clarice uh, wrote a book about Proust. I mean, this, this book was published not a long time ago. And in this book, um, this uh, topic is uh, discussed and metonymy is uh, given priority over metaphor. So metonymy was often used by the so-called young uh, poets who are now at least in their 60s and, and these considered metaphors uh, not suitable. On the one hand, we speak of uh, pictures, but when we say a picture, we think of something we see on TV screens, but a picture is a way of comparing things. Of course, there are no photographs, no screens in the poems. So whenever we speak about a picture, about a painting, we're talking about a thought, a thought that can address you, that can provide you some pictures, some paintings, some images of what we are surrounded by. In other words, I am in favor of um, all of this. I would not like to speak about Ricard oh, here. Milner, for example, pointed out while describing all the great traditions of French literature that there is a certain foundation for all of this. 
I'm afraid we have no more time for any more questions unless you have a very urgent but very brief question. Okay, we do have time for an extremely brief question, a uh, very urgent question, but I'm afraid that um, all we should do now is to thank Michel Degue uh, for coming here. Um, I think we could speak of a conspicuous absence of the audience.